A warm welcome to my dear students. <clears throat> uh, my dear students, today I am going to deliver a lecture on cycloconverters, which is another category of AC to AC converters. In previous lecture, we discussed about uh, single phase AC regulators or single phase AC voltage controllers, which is one category of AC to AC converters. And in those single phase AC voltage controllers, we have seen that by alpha control or by on-off control, depending upon which control technique we use, the RMS value of uh, converter or controller output voltage is made controllable. For a fixed voltage AC, the output voltage is variable. So therefore, uh, we can say that uh, uh, an AC voltage controller or an AC regulator converts fixed uh, voltage AC into variable voltage AC. But it is not possible to change the frequency of output voltage. In many applications, especially in uh, induction motor drives, AC motor drives, variable frequency operation is required. So if uh, the demand is that you, ha you have to change the, or you have to control the frequency of output voltage along with its magnitude, then what is the solution? You have already studied the solution is a voltage source inverter. Using an inverter, a variable frequency inverter, which you have studied in uh, chapter number four, unit four, when we were discussing DC to AC converters or inverters, we can make our, the we can make an inverter to produce variable voltage, variable frequency AC. But the problem with inverter is that it's a two-stage conversion. The input is fixed voltage, fixed frequency AC. Then you have to use a front-end converter which converts AC into DC. And then you have to use inverter, which converts DC back into AC, but at variable voltage, variable frequency. So you need two stages of conversion. There is a category of AC converters where uh, you have you use only one stage of conversion. That is, you avoid the use of AC to DC converter. And using single stage conversion, you can convert uh, AC voltage at one frequency to AC voltage at variable frequency. And that class of converters is called cycloconverters. And that is the topic of discussion for today. So today we are going to discuss cycloconverters. Cycloconverters. So what is a cycloconverter? So let me draw the block diagram. This is a cycloconverter. It may be a single phase cycloconverter or a three phase cycloconverter. The input voltage, this is input AC mains. It's at fixed voltage, fixed frequency, fixed V and fixed F. The output of this cycloconverter is AC. So I will write here output AC, but variable frequency. Or I can write variable voltage, variable frequency. Okay, and it is a single stage conversion. You already know that your inverter can also produce variable voltage, variable frequency AC, but inverter is a two stage conversion. You need a front end converter also there for converting AC into DC and creating a DC link. Then that DC is converted into variable voltage, variable frequency AC by inverter. Uh, here, cyclo converter does not use any front end AC to DC converter. It directly converts AC into AC. So it's an AC to AC converter. It converts fixed voltage, fixed frequency AC into variable voltage, variable frequency AC. So we will uh, study in this lecture uh, single phase and three phase cyclo converters. Uh, later on, I will give you. Uh, I mean, predominantly we will study single phase AC voltage, con so single phase cyclo converters and uh, later on I will give you just an, an introduction to three phase to three phase cyclo converters. So first type of cyclo converter that we are going to discuss is single phase to single phase cyclo converter. That means input is a single phase AC, output is also single phase AC but variable frequency AC and maybe variable voltage also. So the power circuit diagram is like this. This is the power circuit diagram of a single phase to single phase cyclo converter. Let me first of all complete this power circuit diagram. 
the cycloconverters also use naturally commutated thyristors, SCRs. So this is VP and this is IP. What is this VP? What is this IP? I will explain to you. And we have load here. This is the load. The load voltage is V0. For example, load voltage is V0 and load current is I0. And on this side, <coughs> this is it's like this. On this side, we have another converter. So if this is thyristor T1, this is thyristor T2, this is thyristor T3, this is thyristor T4. Similarly, this is T1 dash, this is T2 dash, this is T3 dash, this is T4 dash. This voltage is Vn. Input voltage and current is In. In. While having a look at this circuit, I'm sure uh, something has uh, got refreshed in your mind. What type of converter is this? We have already studied this type of converter. Since we are not having a face-to-face -face class or direct physical class, I would have asked you in the class and I would have definitely expected answers from you. Somebody among you would have risen and told me that, sir, this is the power circuit diagram of a dual converter. And I would have appreciated your answer. Yes, it, the dual converter has similar configuration. A single phase dual converter comprises of two AC to DC phase controlled converters. One converter, converter one and converter two. Cyclo converter also has similar circuit configuration. It is exactly the circuit configuration is same to that of a dual converter, but operation is totally different. A dual converter is basically an AC to DC converter giving four quadrant operation. But this is not an AC to DC converter. Here we will use this dual converter configuration as a cyclo converter for AC to AC conversion. Dual converter and cyclo converter, they have same similar circuit configurations, but operation is different. The, pur the purpose or the objective of a dual converter is to convert AC into control DC. But the purpose of cyclo converter is to convert AC into AC, of course, controlled AC uncontrolled AC into controlled AC. So it com comprises of two converters. This is one converter. We call this converter as P converter. Why we call this P converter? I will come to that. This is P converter and this is another converter. Let me enclose it within this box. This is called N converter. If you want to produce positive half cycle of load voltage, you put P converter into operation. And for producing negative half cycles of voltage across the load, N converter is put into operation. At one time, only one converter is operating, either P converter or N converter. If P converter is operating, it produces positive half cycle of load voltage. And if N converter is operating, it produces negative half cycle of load voltage. Since P converter operation produces positive half cycle across the load, positive half cycle of voltage across the load, that's why it's called P converter, P for positive. And since N converter operation results in the production of negative half cycle of voltage across the load, that's why this converter is called N converter. N stands for negative, okay? So equivalent circuit is like this. Uh, this is P converter output. Uh, the output is V0 is equal to Vm sin omega naught t and we can show a diode like this and a load. This is the load. Load voltage is V0. 
and load current is I0 and on this side you have another converter whose output voltage is V0 equal to Vm sin omega naught t. This is also variable. Okay, and you know as far as the uh, control of these two converters is concerned, these two converters are controlled. Um, I mean here I can show you a controller and this is control signal VC. It issues control pulses at alpha P to positive converter, positive group of converter and it issues simultaneously or it issues firing pulses at delay angle alpha n to negative converter and converter. This is the equivalent circuit. This is equivalent circuit of P converter. This is the equivalent circuit of N converter. Okay. So P converter produces current in this direction and N converter produces current in this direction. In other words, P converter produces positive half cycle of voltage across the load and N converter produces negative half cycle of voltage across the load. So this is the power circuit diagram of a single phase to single phase cyclo converter and it's equivalent circuit. I will write here equivalent circuit. The operation will be clear with the help of waveforms. Let me draw waveforms. So first of all, I will draw the source voltage waveform, Vs, 3 cycles, I will draw 1, 2, 3, okay, uh, and then I will draw negative cycles also, I mean phase displaced, 180 degrees, phase displaced cycles also, right, now, let me show you the load voltage waveform. Load voltage waveform V0. Now, during the positive half cycle of source voltage, let us consider, I mean, uh, across the load, I first want to produce positive half cycle of voltage. For producing positive half cycle of voltage, you have to put P converter into operation. So, your controller will issue firing pulses to the thyristors of P converter on only and it will not issue firing pulses to the thyristors of N converter okay for producing the positive half cycles of voltage positive half cycle of voltage across the load so therefore since this is a positive half cycle of source voltage a positive half cycle of source voltage means this terminal is positive with respect to this that T1 and T3 are forward biased and after issuing the firing pulses to T1 and T3 simultaneously after a delay of alpha electrical degrees let us assume this is alpha. Alpha P, of course. Alpha P means delay angle for positive converter, P converter. Okay. The thyristor pair T1 and T3 will get fired here because at this point our controller is issuing firing pulse to thyristor pair T1 and T3. So these T1 and T3 will immediately go into conduction. And then in the negative half cycle of source voltage the firing pulse will be issued negative half cycle of source voltage means now this terminal is positive with respect to this t2 and t4 have to be fired so this is the firing pulse this has to be issued to t2 t4 similarly in the next positive half cycle firing pulse is to be issued to t1 t3 okay so this is uh, Yes, this is about this. If you um, operate, see, one for one and a half cycle, we operate P converter. For next one and a half cycle, see, from here to here, now we operate N converter. So when uh, you have to operate N converter, the firing pulses to all the thyristors of P converter are inhibited. Inhibited means withdrawn. And now firing, your controller will issue firing pulse to thyristors of this converter. Okay, so for, for positive half cycle of voltage, this pair of thyristors will be on, and for negative half cycle of voltage, this pair of thyristors will be on. Right now, uh, 
Now let me show you the load voltage waveform. Load voltage waveform is like this. During the positive half cycle of source voltage, after a delay of alpha t, firing pulse is issued simultaneously to P1 T3 and P1 T3 go into conduction and remaining segment of positive half cycle of source voltage from alpha to pi, it gets applied across the load. So that I can show here. Let me first of all draw these projections pi. This is 2 pi. 2 pi. Similarly, this 0 crossing is 3 pi. 4 pi. 5 pi and 6 pi. And our load voltage will be like this. Now, at alpha, this is the delay angle, alpha p. Firing pulse is issued to this pair of thyristors. This pair of thyristors goes into conduction. Load gets connected directly across the source and it receives the remaining segment of voice of cycle of source voltage. So this is the voltage across the load. Now I could have now got negative half cycle here by turning on this converter, but I want frequency control. For frequency control, uh, you know, next in next half cycle also, I would like uh, this P converter to operate and produce another positive half, positive half segment of voltage across the load. Something like this. In the negative half cycle of source voltage, now T2, T4 pair is to be triggered. So firing pulse is issued to T2, T4 pair. They immediately go into conduction and load again receives the remaining segment of positive half cycle of voltage across the load. This is just like the operation of a phase controlled AC to DC converter, single phase AC to DC converter, which you have already studied in your uh, unit 2, chapter 2, while discussing AC to DC converters. And then comes next positive half cycle of voltage. In the next positive half cycle of voltage, again T1, T3 pair is fired and you again get a segment of positive half cycle of voltage across the load. So I get three positive half segments of voltage across the load. Why three? I will come to that. I will explain it. And now I want to get negative half cycles of voltage across the load. For getting negative half cycles of voltage across the load, let me draw dotted negative half cycles. Now, after this point, it is time for N converter to operate. Now what your controller will do, it will withdraw firing pulses from P converter. So P converter will be off and it will now issue firing pulses to N converter. And you already know when N converter is operated, since N converter is anti-parallel to uh, P converter, it produces this terminal will be positive with this. When P converter operates, this terminal will, will be positive with respect to this. So it produces positive voltage as you can see. But when N converter is operated at same delay angle, see, if this is 30, uh, 45 degrees, this here for N converter operation also delay angle is same, 45 degrees. When N converter is operated, it produces the, what is the polarity of voltage at the output of N converter? This terminal is positive with respect to this. So this is, this polarity of voltage is opposed to this polarity of voltage. So if this is positive voltage, this is negative voltage. So therefore, first firing takes place here. So that means from this to this point, load voltage is zero. And from this point onwards, the remaining segment of negative half cycle of voltage appears across the load. And similarly, next firing occurs here. So from this point to this point, load voltage is zero, and then negative remaining segment of negative half segment of voltage will appear across the load. And then this is next firing instant. Here T1, T3 dash will be fired, and then T2, T4 dash, T1, T3 dash will be fired at the positive half cycle and T2, T4 dash will be fired in the negative half cycles, just like this converter. So this is the nature of voltage that you get across the load. And of course, you get negative segments of voltage across the load. So therefore, what do you get? By controlling P converter, you get three segments where, of course, with a certain delay angle, alpha, you get three positive segments of voltage across the load. And when you uh, put N converter into operation, of course, N converter will produce negative voltage across the load. And by controlling the N converter with delay angle alpha N, this is alpha N, you get three segments of negative half cycle of voltage across the load. Now, when you combine the, these three positive segments and three negative segments, 
these three positive segments of voltage are similar uh, i mean they represent the positive half cycle of voltage across the load and combining these three negative half segments of voltage it becomes a single negative half cycle across the load so therefore your load voltage will look like this if you find average value of this average value of this and average value of this so it will be like this this is p converter p converter will be on during this time and if you find average value of these the average value of these will be negative so n converter will be on during this so this is the type of voltage you get across the load so what type of voltage do you get across the load it is ac voltage and for how many cycles of ac source ac you get one cycle of dc see one two three so, so for so for three cycles of source voltage how many cycles you get across the load only one cycle so if that means if source frequency is 50 hertz your load voltage frequency will be 1 by 3 times fs because for three cycles of ac you get only one cycle of for three cycles of input ac you get one cycle of output dc so 1 by 3 into 50 so that means 1 by 3 of 15 means 16.667 hertz. This is the frequency of voltage across the load. So therefore, the uh, load voltage magnitude can be controlled by alpha control. Okay, you, can, you, can, you can adjust alpha in such a way that load voltage is controlled and frequency can be controlled by choosing the number of positive half segments and number of negative half segments. If you want frequency, I mean 1 by 2 fs, then after two segments only, you know, after you then in that case you will have two segments of voice to half cycle and two segments of negative half cycle, then, then again two segments of voice to half cycle and two segments of negative half cycle. In that case, your output voltage will be like this. So for here, if you are getting one cycle, here you will get two cycles. Now it depends upon how many segments of positive half voltage you choose and how many segments in the negative half cycle you choose that will decide the frequency. So for three cycles, one, two and three, three cycles of input AC voltage, the output voltage receives only one cycle. This is positive half cycle and this is negative half cycle. So the frequency you have controlled from 50 hertz to 16.667 hertz because frequency of output voltage is 1 by 3 times frequency of input voltage. So therefore you can get output voltage frequency of 2 by 3 of input voltage frequency. You can get 1 by 4 of input voltage frequency. It depends upon your load requirement. Okay. So this explains the basic operation of your single phase to single phase cyclo converter. Your input voltage is single phase. Output voltage is also single phase. But frequency is different. The output voltage frequency here is 1 by 3 of input voltage frequency. Okay, uh, This explains the operation with the help of waveforms of a single phase to single phase cyclo converter. Now you can see the output voltage is almost rectangular in nature. It will be having, I mean, if you see the average value of positive half cycle, it is like this. Average value of negative half cycle is like this. But I want, uh, I mean, if you do the harmonic analysis of this voltage waveform, the load voltage will be very, very rich in harmonics. It will, it will have all, you know, uh, bad harmonics, like it will have third harmonic, which is very difficult to filter out. It will have fifth harmonic, seventh harmonic, ninth, eleventh, thirteenth, fifteenth, seventeenth, and so on. So if you want a better harmonic spectrum, okay, in that case, you can do the delay angle control in such a way that average you know load voltage in the positive half cycle varies sinusoidally and average voltage uh, in the negative half cycle also varies sinusoidally so in that case you can do something like this let me show you let me show you the output voltage only for large number of cycles for clarity output voltage v not i'm not showing input voltage i will show you the output voltage only one two three four five let me take large number of half cycles six seven okay 
So first delay angle will be large. Next delay angle will be small. Next delay angle will be even smaller. Next delay angle will be smallest. And then it will increase. It will increase and it will increase. So uh, what is the load voltage in the first half cycle? Here alpha P is very large. You make alpha P very large. You get a small segment of voltage across the load. A small segment of voltage across the load. And then next delay angle you here if delay angle is say 120 degrees here delay angle is only 70 degrees you decrease delay angle so that you get more voltage across the load more large segment of positive voltage across the load this is done purposely next delay angle i mean in the next half cycle delay angle is further reduced it is now reduced from 70 degrees to only 30 degrees you can see around th say 40 degrees around 40 degrees and you get still large voltage segment across the load. And then in the next half cycle, delay angle is further reduced. How much is delay angle here? It is around 20 to 25 degrees only. So you get very large voltage segment across the load. And then you again increase. I mean, how much was this delay angle? This delay angle was um, 40 degree. You again increase it to 40 degree. How much was this delay angle? This was 70 degree. You again inc you increase this also to same value, 70 degree. I mean, it should be symmetrical. These half cycles should be symmetrical to these half cycles. And what was the delay angle here? It was 120 degree. You make this also 120 degree. And you make it very sinusoidally. Now you find the average value of this first segment. Its average value will be very small. Then you find the average value of second segment. It will be large, but it will be varying sinusoidally. If you make uh, adjust the de delay angle so that delay angle from one half cycle to second half cycle, if it varies sinusoidally, your average load voltage, average load voltage with each half cycle will also vary sinusoidally. So second uh, average value of second segment of voltage is higher than first. Average value of this third segment of voltage is higher than this. Average value of this voltage segment is highest of all. Then it for decreases. This is less than this. Average value of this is less than this. Average value of this is less than this. So if you find average value of voltage of different voltage segments, you may make it to vary sinusoidally like this. Average value of first segment is this much. Then average value of second segment, you vary sinusoidally. You increase it because you decrease the, the angle. If delay angle is a function of sine wave, then this increases sinusoidally. Then third delay angle is still less, so you get more voltage across the load. So this voltage increases from this level to this level, but in a sinusoidal manner. And you get maximum voltage here. Because this is the, here the voltage is maximum, this is the peak, and then it reduces. This is how you get positive half cycle. You can get positive half cycle of voltage varying almost sinusoidally, and in a similar way, you can get negative half cycle of voltage. So, therefore, by delay angle control from one segment to another segment, if you make delay angle to vary sinusoidally, you can make average load voltage. Uh, like in the previous case, I have shown average load voltage for positive half cycle like this, and average negative voltage for negative uh, half cycle like this. But in this case, what is the average? voltage for positive half cycle it is almost sinusoidally varying and similarly for negative half cycle it will be sinusoidally varying this also will have harmonics because wherever there is delay angle i mean the voltage waveform is chopped you will have harmonics this will not be perfectly sinusoidal but it will be approximating to sinusoidal this voltage waveform will also have harmonics but the content of harmonics is much less than the content of harmonics in this type of waveform so this is how you can improve the quality of load voltage waveform. So this is about single phase to single phase cycloconverter. Now, there is another category of cycloconverter which is three phase to single phase cycloconverter. Let me explain to you three phase to single phase cycloconverter. Three phase to single phase cycloconverter means, I mean, in three phase to single phase cycloconverter, you will have three phase converters on both sides. You will have a dual converter type configuration like this. 
this is your load load may be a, an induction motor a single phase induction motor this is load voltage v naught load current for example i naught and then another converter is on the other side So input is three phase, this is A, B, C, similarly here also input is three phase, A, B and C, this is thyristor T1, T3, T5, T2, T4, T6, similarly this is T1 dash, T3 dash, T5 dash, T2 dash, T4 dash, T6 dash. Now, this is a three phase converter, and of course, this is P converter. This is P converter, but it is a three phase P converter. In the previous case, we were discussing single phase P converter, and this is N converter. P converter will produce positive voltage across the load, and N converter will produce negative half cycle of voltage across the load. So, therefore, you will get AC voltage across the load, but at variable frequency, right? So this is a three phase uh, full converter. This is also a three phase full converter, but they are anti-parallel connected, back to back connected like this, just like a three phase dual converter. But the operation is not like a dual converter. Dual converter converts AC into controlled DC, but this converts AC into controlled AC. Here, AC here is at fixed voltage, fixed frequency, and AC across the load will be variable at variable frequency, okay? The purpose is to vary the frequency. The waveforms will be like this, I will approximately draw the waveforms. Let me draw various line voltages. This is omega t. This is line voltage VAB. VBC will be 120 degrees phase displaced. This is VBC and line voltage VCA will start after one further 120 degrees like this. This is VCA. Now input voltage is three phase or my output voltage will be single phase but variable frequency because now I am discussing three phase to single phase cyclo converter. I should write here three phase to single phase cyclo converter. Cyclo converter. Let us suppose first uh, firing takes place here. Next firing will take place here. Next firing will take place here for positive half cycles. And for negative half cycles, first firing will take place here, second firing will take place here, and third firing will take place here. Therefore, your load voltage V0 will be like this from this instant to this instant. If a pair of devices is fired here, okay, you will get VAB voltage across the load. So VAB will be like this. So it will be like this, this. This is VAB. Then what is the next segment of wood? Next firing is made here. Here another pair of devices goes into conduction and load voltage becomes VCB. And what is VCB? VCB is like this. From this instant to this instant. Load voltage varies like this. VCB. And then next firing is made here. The load voltage becomes VCA as you can see. Similar. VCA. So you get the positive half cycle of voltage and similarly you can get the negative half cycle of voltage. You will not have any voltage. Now here at this instant, now this converter, P converter on tha. P converter was on. Now from this onwards, you will put N converter on. So 
So P converter you will turn off. That means your controller will not issue any firing pulses to devices of P converter. It will not start issuing firing pulses to devices of N converter. So N converter when it turns on, it also produces line voltage segments, but those line voltage segments will have this polarity. When P converter is turned on, it will produce this polarity voltage, positive polarity voltage, you can see. And when this converter is turned on at same delay angle, this converter will produce negative voltage, plus minus like this. So that negative voltage will vary like this. So that will be this segment. And then again another set and then you will get similarly. So you, therefore you get three segments of positive half cycle of voltage and three segments of negative half cycle of voltage. During this period this converter is controlled and it produces the positive segments of voltage and during this period this converter is controlled and it produces the negative half segments of the voltage. So therefore, you are, this is your lower voltage. So how many cycles source voltage has? One, two, three. Source voltage is having three cycles and lower voltage is having only one cycle. So here also frequency of output is one by three times frequency of input. So therefore, you achieve the frequency control. But here, this is a three phase to single phase cyclo converter. Input is three phase, but output is single phase. So this is another way of uh, uh, controlling the frequency of voltage across the load. Instead of using single phase to single phase three, uh, cyclo converter, we can use three phase to single phase cyclo converter. Okay, so this uh, why it is called cyclo converter. Cycle is the uh, cycle means cyclo converter means it co controls the cycles, number of cycles. And controlling the number of cycles means controlling the frequency, which is basically frequency converter. Okay, so this is about three phase to single phase cyclo converter, and then you can have three phase to three phase cyclo converter also. And three phase to three phase cyclo converter will be very complex. I mean, complex in the sense that large number of devices will be used there. Three phase to three phase cyclo converter. So I will show its log diagram like this. P group of thyristors, I mean P converter, this is N converter. This is P converter, this is N converter. This is P converter and this is N converter. And then you will have load like this. This is phase A load. Phase A load. This is phase B load and this is phase C load. And this is the neutral. Okay. So um, for phase A you have uh, one cyclo converter. I am showing the schematic diagram. It does not mean the cyclo converter has one device. Uh, this is a three phase converter and this is also a three phase converter. This is P converter, this is N converter. This produces uh, you know, power supply for phase A. And this cyclo converter controls phase B and this cyclo converter controls phase C. If you take one converter, I mean this one converter will be like this. We have A, B, C. I mean if you take this converter, the connection is like this. You have 
like this. And then we have N converter. N converter is like this. So this is P converter, this is N converter, and then they are connected like this, and this is the load. Say for example phase A. And then similarly you have this for phase B. And then you have this. This is for phase A, I mean complete diagram. This one device means actually three devices. And this converter and converter means three devices. So therefore, how many devices total? You need three plus three six. 6 for one phase, 6 into 3, 18 high resistors are required, 18 high resistors are required. And then input is 3 phase of course, you can see input is 3 phase, output is also 3 phase, it controls individual phases. And the operation is similar, as I have shown a few moments back. There, that was a three phase to single phase cyclo converter, but this is a three phase to three phase cyclo converter. You can, uh, across phase A, you can, I mean, if for three cycles of input voltage, across the phase A, you can have only one cycle. Similarly, phase B will have one cycle, phase C will have one cycle, and those voltages will be 120 degrees phase displaced with respect to each other. So therefore, output voltage frequency, you can make one by three, of input voltage. I mean, in the here in two waveforms, I have shown output voltage frequency as one by three input voltage frequency. But it can be anything. It can be one by four. It can be two by four. Okay, it can be one by um, uh, one by two. Okay, that depends upon the, your your load requirement. So this is about three phase to three phase cyclo converter. So therefore, what are the advantages and drawbacks of cyclo converters? I have not uh, discussed these cyclo converters in very details. Uh, I have given you the uh, you know basic idea of what is a cyclo converter and how a cyclo converter works. Advantage: the only advantage of cyclo converter is single stage conversion. Single stage conversion. Okay, that's number one. And number two, natural commutation of thyristors. Thyristors. Single stage conversion means it is an AC to AC converter. You don't have to create DC link just like for an inverter. You have AC input, output is also AC. So single stage conversion. You have a single converter. AC to AC converter or cyclo converter. You don't have any front end converter, so I mean that uh, that reduces the cost and that reduces the size and also losses. Okay, so single stage conversion. Second advantage is that since these cyclo converters use thyristors, and basically these thyristors are connected in phase controlled converters, and natural commutation or line commutation is required. You don't need to operate them at very high switching frequency, and you don't need any forced commutation circuitry. Whenever a particular thyristor is reverse biased, it automatically turns off. So natural commutation of thyristors is required. Uh, you don't need any forced commutation here. But it suffers from some serious drawbacks. What are the drawbacks of cyclo converters? First drawback is that it produces discrete values of frequencies. Discrete frequencies. like 1 by 4, 1 by 3, 1 by 2, 1 by 4 F, 1 by 3 F, 1 by 4 F, 1 by 2 F, F. It, so it, uh, in those applications where you need continuous control of frequency, for example, you need control of frequency from 50 hertz to, from 5 hertz to 50 hertz, continuously, smoothly. This is not uh, the converter that you should use there. Because it produces only a fixed discrete values of frequencies. Like if your input voltage is at 50 hertz, it can produce output voltage at a frequency of, you know, for one arrangement, it can produce output voltage 1 by 4 of 50 hertz. 
and then you can increase it to 1 by 3 of 50 years. Then you can increase it to 1 by 2 of 50 years, which means 25 years, then 50 years. So four frequency values are here. This is how much? 50 by 4, 12.5 hertz. This is uh, 1 by 3, that is 16.67 hertz. This is 25 hertz. And this is 50 hertz. So you can produce only a few number of frequency steps like 12.5 hertz, 1 by 4 f, 16.67 hertz, which means 1 by 3 f, 25 hertz, which means f by 2 or 1 by 2 f, and 50 hertz. But many induction motor loads, they need continuous speed control. Here, how many speeds it will give for if you control the induction motor? Only four speeds. But many industrial applications demand continuous or smooth variation of speed from zero to full speed. So there uh, we should be able to vary the frequency of the supply to induction motor smoothly, not in steps, but it gives only a few steps of voltage. So that is the problem. So therefore it has a limited application, only in those cases where only few speed speeds are required, discrete speeds are required. Okay, and second uh, drawback is that lower voltage current, load current, and source current is very rich in harmonics, very rich in harmonics. That means it is distorted. Your load voltage you have just now seen through waveforms, it's not pure sinusoid. It comprises of few positive half segments and few negative half segments and those segments are also chopped. They are not sinusoidal segments. I mean it is not like this. It is something like this. Chopped for positive half cycle and similarly for negative half cycle. So load voltage is distorted. And if your load is induction motor, then, you know induction motor has to carry large harmonic, strong harmonic components of current in the windings which will increase the eddy current losses, which will increase the the stasis loss which will uh, increase the uh, harmonic losses in the machine. It will result in vibrations, harmonic torques, pulsations and other problems. Okay. Um, similarly, the, the since these cycloconverters are basically the, what type of current they draw from the source? They, they draw distorted current from the source. So since input current drawn by them is distorted, it's highly distorted. So that means the line currents, the currents which are flowing through the lines distribution you know these uh, feeders or lines or transmission lines they are also they also get distorted because of cycloconverters and that creates the power quality problems because distorted currents produce distorted voltages at the point of common coupling which will dis disturb other voltage sensitive loads which are getting power supply from the same feeder okay so because of these problems cycloconverters do not find their uh, you know widespread application only limited application is there Number one, where discrete steps uh, of speeds are required. And number two, for only for low power applications. They do not find application, uh, you know, for medium power and high power induction motor drives in the industries. There we use voltage source inverters, variable frequency inverters, which, have, which, is a two, which gives a two-stage conversion. First, AC is converted into DC. Uh, along with filter capacitor, a DC link is created and then, then DC is with the help of PWM operation. The DC is converted back into variable voltage, variable frequency AC and you have a smooth and wide range of frequency control and wide range of torque control or speed control of induction motor takes place. This is what actually industries adopt. They adopt variable frequency industries, not cycloconverters. So cycloconverters have a very limited application. But cycloconverter is a direct AC to AC converter. It's a single stage conversion. So with this, we have come to an end of unit 5. In unit 5, since uh, previous lecture, we have discussed AC to various types of AC to AC converters. In the last lecture, we discussed uh, single phase AC regulators or AC voltage controllers. Different categories, we used two different techniques. We discussed on-off control and phase control. Okay. And then in phase control technique also we discuss two types of uh, AC voltage controllers, single phase half wave voltage controller or unidirectional AC voltage controller and single phase full wave or bidirectional AC voltage controller. We have done the mathematical analysis also, we have got the RMS uh, mathematical expressions for RMS output voltages 
and we have seen that these AC voltage controllers are useful for controlling the output voltage, amplitude of output voltage or magnitude of output voltage. They cannot control the frequency. And for frequency control, we have today discussed another type of AC to AC converter, which is called cyclo converter. We can have single phase to single phase cyclo converter, we can have three phase to single phase cyclo converter, or we can have three phase to three phase cyclo converters. Cyclo converters are basically frequency changers. They convert fixed frequency AC into variable frequency AC. So this completes our discussions on AC to AC converters, unit five. And I am very pleased, very glad to announce the completion of the syllabus, the completion of the course. I still remember the day when I went to my office, I got this board, which was there in my office, in my car, it was a strict lockdown. And I requested policemen who were guarding the uh, roads uh, that uh, please allow me to go to the institute and they allowed me to go to the institute. I got uh, a few of these uh, marker pens and this whiteboard and I was not knowing how to video shoot these lectures and then slowly uh, and gradually I learned video shooting. First I held some practice sessions in this bedroom and slowly it gave me confidence I, and I started uh, video shooting lectures for your course. I could have given you PDF files or I could have given you links to NPTEL lectures but believe me you could not have learned from those PDF files or NPTEL links or no doubt from NPTEL links you can learn but um, maybe um, they don't uh, explain uh, in great depths or maybe um, uh, you could have faced some difficulties their syllabus in the NPTEL link would have been different from our syllabus otherwise NPTEL from NPTEL lectures there is a lot to learn from IIT professors, IIT teachers, IIT faculty members but the syllabus variation could have been there. So I said uh, I felt that why I should not uh, take the opportunity and since we are at home why not to work from home instead of giving you PDF files why not to take a little bit of pains and start video shooting lectures and I started video shooting of lectures with every passing day I got a lot of confidence and here I am and uh, in this endeavor uh, I am very thankful to all of you my dear students you have been very patient during this period uh, I'm sure you have watched the lectures whenever I post the link on your uh, whatsapp group and we have these lecture links YouTube links on uh, our uh, departmental website also I have created my own uh, YouTube channel in my name, Professor A.H. Bhatt, E.D. and A.T. Srinagar. You can visit that link and all these lectures are there on that uh, YouTube channel. So I'm sure you have gone through these lectures and we are still going through these lectures. And power electronics, believe me, it's one of the most important subjects in your syllabus. And it, uh, you know, in your future courses also, and some of you may go for higher studies, some of you, some of you may work in industries, in R&D wings, research and development wings, and there you find widespread use of power electronics. Your support, it's only because of your support, your patience, that I am here, I was able to complete my syllabus. And uh, I would like to share one thing with you. Uh, it was not possible to complete 100% syllabus in the institute if in, in physical face-to-face -face classes because you know in face-to-face -face classes we have a class duration of 50 to 55 minutes and you cannot extend your class because the other teacher who is waiting outside he will start knocking the door and you have to leave the class and then there are holidays and on holidays and other non-working days you are not able to engage classes and it becomes very difficult to complete 100% syllabus but because of lockdown because of work from home I had no tension and you have seen my last three lectures were of more than two hour duration because I had all the time in the world nobody would come and disturb me and uh, you know uh, it's because of this I was able to complete 100% syllabus the only uh, shortcoming is that I could not engage a tutorial class but you can give me your feedback if you wish I can have one special class uh, where we'll be solving some numerical examples uh, we can have one tutorial class. If you wish, you can put your comments, you can request me or you can ask me and I will engage one tutorial class. So I still remember uh, we started with chapter number one when I started video shooting lectures. Our first chapter was introduction to power electronics and some practical applications of power electronics in residential applications, 
commercial applications, industrial applications, transportation, utility, and so on. That was chapter one. And our chapter number two was around power semiconducting devices. We discussed about power diode, thyristor, uh, operation of thyristor using two transistor model, VI characteristics, turn on characteristics, turn off characteristics, and then uh, the series and parallel connection of thyristors. Although I have given notes for that. And then our next chapter was AC to DC converters, phase controlled converters. We started uh, with single phase AC to DC phase controlled converters, then three phase AC to DC phase controlled converters. That was the longest unit, longest chapter. Then our next unit was DC to DC converters. I have given you comprehensive notes for that. We could not hold video lectures for that. Uh, but I hope we have gone through those notes and those are very, uh, I have myself prepared those notes in very simple language so that we can understand DC to DC converters. We primarily uh, discuss two types of DC to DC converters, DC to DC buck converter that step out, step down chopper and DC to DC boost converter, step up chopper. And then we discussed uh, DC to AC converters, that's inverters and mostly we discuss voltage source inverters, various types of single phase, first single phase square wave inverter, and three phase six step voltage source inverter, and then single phase PWM voltage source inverter, and three phase PWM voltage source inverter, you can do yourself, I have given you the idea. And then our last lecture was AC to AC converters, here in AC to AC converters, we discussed AC voltage controllers, single phase AC voltage controllers, and single phase to single phase cyclo converters, three phase to single phase cyclo converters and a brief introduction to three phase to three phase cyclo converters. That marks the end of your syllabus, 100% syllabus. Please go through all these lectures, prepare for exam and um, you know uh, in case of any doubt, uh, any query you can put your query, you can directly even call me, no problem, I am ready to, uh, I will be pleased to answer your queries even on telephone, even on cell phone. You can directly call me, you can put your comments on WhatsApp group or on YouTube channel. I will be pleased to reply your queries, clear your doubts. I again, once again, advise you and request you to please go through all these lectures. Don't study these, this subject only from the point of view of examination. Study it from the point of learning and gaining the knowledge. In case of any difficulty, you are most welcome, you can, you can call me, you can get connected to me, I am ready to clear your doubts and you know, um, uh, I am ready to reply your queries. So with this, uh, I will, uh, uh, many students, especially MTEC students, uh, because I was uh, having another subject, HUDC systems for MTEC, I have already last week completed their syllabus, many MTEC students put their comments, sir, how did you make it possible to convert your bedroom into a classroom and video shoot the lectures. My only answer was, and same answer is for you, where there is a will, there is a way. That's all. Thank you very much.